Hello Steelers, and welcome to this photo report of the recent Ebor Lard Games Day which I attended. It was held in the small village of Green Hamerton, just outside of York, and it was a day packed with lardy goodness. There were seven games on offer from the Two Fat Lardy Stable, and they were available to try for each of us having a morning and an afternoon session to play in. We had Rich Clark there, who was playtesting the new Infamy Infamy supplement, uh, which should be seeing the light of day soon. Uh, John Savage also organised the day, and he umpired his winter Infamy Infamy game, some of which of you may have seen at the recent wargaming shows, and I'm sure it'll probably turn up as well over the next year or so. Jeremy Short was demoing his new Shattered Shields game, which is an interesting mashup of Chain of Command, Sharp Practice, Dux Britannia Infamy Infamy, and the classic Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Charlie Walker had a rum soaked game of Kiss Me Hardy, where French and British warships went at it hammer and tongs. Dux Britanniarum was also transported to feudal Japan by Mal Malcolm Bow with his seven spears. Simon Walker had a game of Sharp Practice which was set through the 1840s New Zealand Wars. And then finally John Elwyn took What a Tanker beyond the Second World War with What a Mecca. I'm afraid I didn't film anything as I was too busy playing and I didn't want to interfere with the games. But I did manage to take plenty of photos of the two games that I played in. And this is going to be a short report on both of those with the pinch my photos to illustrate. My morning's game was playing on the British side in John's Infamy Infamy game set in the frozen ancient Yorkshire as a Roman column of carts made their way towards the safety of the local fort. However, the local Harrogate barbarians had a different idea and they set out to smash up the column and rob the loot. The Romans deployed a group of auxiliaries from the fort in order to close down some of the British ambush points, but they were caught in the open by a group of British light cavalry. Meanwhile, a group of Yorkshiremen gathered on the village to threaten the flank of the column. Acting swiftly, the forward group of Roman legionaries swung around to face off with the barbarian mob, which then piled headlong into them. The first round of fighting went to the mob, with the legionaries being forced back despite their good drills. However, the Roman auxiliary had put the British cavalry to flight, but then were attacked by an elite group of warriors who were riding in on chariots. After a hard fight, the auxiliaries were destroyed, and the elites then turned their attention to the column. Despite putting up a brave fight, the legionaries were being overwhelmed by the barbarian mob. Another group of elite warriors then arrived in their chariots, and they hit the legionaries in the rear, taking them by surprise. The head of the Roman column was now completely surrounded and losing badly. However, help had arrived for the Romans in the form of their light cavalry and more auxiliary infantry. Unfortunately for the mob, the cavalry were now threatening their flank, and ordered on by the Optio, they smashed into them, destroying two groups of warriors immediately. But the last Roman legionaries were wiped out, and a cart was smashed by Dominatrix and her men. The Roman auxiliary troops were sent forward to plug the gap and try to avert disaster. But whipped into a frenzy by Dominatrix, the barbarian elite warriors charged into them and caused enough damage to break the group, forcing the Roman morale to drop to zero and win the game. Those southerners will think twice about trying to tame the north. My second game of the day was a sharp practice game set during the New Zealand Wars of the 1840s, where a group of Maori warriors were set on destroying a British logging camp and a Royal Navy signalling station. And who can blame them when the logging camp was busy destroying their sacred grove? I took command of the British Redcoats camped nearby who were tasked with defending the camp along with the troops of the Royal Navy. A motley collection of civilians armed with fouling pieces were also present to protect their profits. Meanwhile, a group of women were also trying to escape the attack and get back to the safety of the British Army's camp. Attacking in two large groups, the Maoris used their command cards to move quickly forward to threaten the signalling station and run down the beach. The British sent forth a detachment of skirmishers to try to block the flank attack as the Navy boys came under increasing pressure in the stockade. Near the logging building, Maoris ran through the jungles to attack the other flank with their eyes on the prize. A fierce firefight broke out at the signalling station, with the Maoris able to slightly tip the balance through strength of numbers. The British infantry arrived in the centre of the table to plug the gap in the middle of the British line whilst they also pushed up the beach, firing as they went. But would it be enough to hold the Maori assault? 
Despite driving off a group of Maoris in the centre, it was bows and arrows against the lightning as several groups of Maori warriors were able to get onto the flank of the logging building. The warriors began setting fire to the building and then charged out into the flank of the civilians, wiping them out and killing their leader in a grisly display. As the fire spread across the wooden building packed with timber, the warriors turned their attention to the women and charged into their group. Unfortunately, despite the women bellowing at the incoming warriors, they were badly mauled. At this point, the British morale collapsed as the logging buildings blazed and the Maoris decimated the British flanks. An excellent and unusual game of sharp practice that had a great asymmetric feel to it. Overall, an excellent day of lardy goodness. Two great games. Uh, I was knackered out by the end of it. A massive thanks goes out to everybody involved with playing the games and in particular to John for organising not only the accommodation for everybody but also the game's place and also lunch as well. Really good, if you can get on to one of these Lardy Games days then I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. Stay tuned for more of these kind of reports in the future and thank you very much for watching.